so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville when someone is going through grief some people try consoling them by saying god loves you he reserves the toughest battles for his strongest soldiers but for that grieved person it almost makes them feel worse it makes them wonder if I am truly loved by God, then why did he choose to overwhelm me with sorrow? Even the strongest Christians find themselves broken when confronted by overwhelming and recurrent grief. And that was the sad case and story of Pastor Taiwo Odukoya. Pastor Taiwo was born in Kaduna, Northern Nigeria in 1956. He attended his primary and secondary school education there and then proceeded to the prestigious University of Ibadan to obtain a degree. He didn't envisage being an evangelist. Nigeria then was experiencing the oil boom. So studying petroleum engineering and getting employment in the oil and gas sector seemed like a fantastic and brilliant idea. And so he did. He graduated from the University of Ibadan with a degree in petroleum engineering and landed a great job with the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, the NNPC. While Pastor Taiwo was in the university, he met the beautiful, charming Abimbola Rosemary Williams. She was gorgeous outstanding and had a larger-than-life personality. She was studying history and archaeology there at the university and when Pastor Taiwo set his eyes on her, that bell that rings in a man when he finds the woman rang continuously inside him. They formalized their relationship shortly after Bimbo graduated. They courted for five years and then proceeded to get married. Their marriage was blessed with three wonderful children, two girls and a boy. Pastor Taiwo had a beautiful, comfortable life. He had a gorgeous, intelligent wife and three amazing, healthy children and a mouth-watering job, a career that people would literally kill for. But he wasn't content. He didn't feel like he was fulfilling his unique purpose. He felt there was more God designed him for than what he was presently doing. He had a nagging calling to be a pastor and go into full-time ministration. He knew that there was no way he was going to be a full-time minister, pastoring his own church while working a full-time 9 to 5. He knew that he had a very tough decision to make. He made it anyways. Until your reason is accomplished, the power has not been given to any devil to kill you. In January of 1994, Pastor Taiwo handed the big letter to his employers. He tendered his resignation and then faced his pastoral calling full time, growing his church, a church that would eventually spread to almost 10,000 members. The Fountain of Life Church was floated in 1992 and was co-founded with his beautiful wife, Bimbo, popularly called Pastor Bims. Pastor Bimbo was not only gorgeous, she had the gift of words. She was a prolific writer and an outstanding orator. And so she has become in agreement spiritually, even in her thinking. Are you with me? A very talented counselor too, I must add. She had columns in many national and international magazines and newspapers. City People, Leadership, Lifestyle Magazine, name it. She was the author of many books, How to Choose a Life Partner, there were many of them. She was also a tele-evangelist. She used to run this program, Single and Married, a program which guided married and unmarried people on matters pertaining to relationship. Pastor Bimbo was no doubt an outstanding personality. She was the pride of her husband, the want of her children. The world had so much to gain from her, but fate had other plans. Traveling for evangelism and programs 
is part of the job of being a pastor. And in this particular December, Pastor Bimbo had traveled to Abuja for ministration. From there, she was to connect to Patakot for another one. It was her last scheduled trip for that year. So on the 10th of December 2005, she proceeded to the Nnamdi Azikiwe Airport in Abuja to board a plane, a Susuliso aircraft to Portakot. Bimbo had been on board several planes during the course of her life as a pastor. So this one didn't feel any different. She had strapped her seatbelt, called her husband that they were about to take off and promised as always that she was going to call him when they landed. She switched off her mobile device, looked around the plane. The flight was filled with young children. Children between the ages of 12 to 15. Over 60 of them. Students of the Loyola Jesuit College in Abuja. They had just vacated for the year and they were traveling back home to spend the Xmas holiday with their families. I bet she smiled seeing all these children around her. Perhaps reminded of her own three little children at home. I bet in that second she thought about them. She missed them. Not too far from her was a French national and there was an American national also aboard the plane. There was a national president of the oil and gas union, Pengasin, and there were two volunteers working for Doctors Without Borders. It was a full flight. Seven crew members and 103 passengers. A total of 110 people aboard that flight. She must have not had a short prayer. Confidence of Johnny Messers, after all, she was doing the Lord's work. At exactly 12.25 p.m., the flight took off. The flight to Port Harcourt was pretty uneventful. Light snacks were served along the way. It was a smooth one. And after about an hour, the thatched roofs of the city of Port Harcourt became more and more visible. There were landing. They never landed. It was raining. The weather was bad and the runway lacked adequate lighting. The pilot made the wrong decision to make a turn when he felt like he wasn't seeing the runway clear enough. But at that time, the plane had already descended too low for that act. It was already a whooping 100,000 feet below the altitude for that decision to be made. The plane could not survive such a move. It crashed into the grassy area that was in the middle of the runway. It then slid into a nearby drainage. The impact was so much, it destroyed the plane. The engine was stuck in the drainage. The rear part of the plane quickly damaged. The plane had officially crashed. The impact of the crash had left some passengers dead, but a lot more were alive. But the devil was not done yet. Within the blink of an eye, the fuel began to leak. The plane was still in motion and boom, there was a fire outbreak. The plane was engulfed in flames. Still sliding hundreds of meters away, the screams and tormenting yells of children could be heard from miles away. Burning in the inferno, helpless, dying. It was the most tragic sight to behold and the most sorrowful sound to be heard. When the plane eventually came to a halt and rescue came, a hundred and three passengers were already dead and seven were still alive though in very terrible shape pastor bimbo was amongst the survivors most unfortunately there was only one fire truck and no single ambulance in the whole of the potakot international airport and so the critically injured survivors had to be rushed to the hospital without any first aid bimbo struggled and fought and hung on for six whole hours but she couldn't pull through she died from her injuries at the very young age of 45.
Life, they say, is mysterious and some things cannot just be explained. And what happens to Pastor Taiwo at the point when his wife died, despite he had no idea that there was a plane crash, not to talk of the fact that his wife had passed, remains a mystery. He recounted that he had gone to the bathroom and then stooped to pick something. And when he tried getting up, he rammed his head onto the edge of the toothpaste rack. He went blank. Is this how people die? He remembered asking himself. The pain was so excruciating that he felt life leaving him. He almost fell into unconsciousness. After a while, he managed to crawl out to the sofa in the living room, trying to get control of his sanity and his consciousness. When he got the call that would change his life forever. Bearing the loss of his darling wife, Bimbo, was no easy task for Pastor Taiwo. She was his life, his right-hand mantle, the eyes that he sees with. They had courted for five years and were married for 21 years. She had become a part of him. He never envisaged in his wildest dreams that he was going to be a widower so soon with three children. He was so distraught. At this point, I would love to talk to us about something. I would love to introduce us to a book called Grieving While Christian. Grief is a deep consuming feeling. It changes you, changes your perception about life, it could alter your relationship with your friends, in your marriage, with your colleagues. It can even change your temperament, your personality, your productivity, and even shake your faith. You may find yourself doubting God, His existence, or His love for you. I have something very, very valuable for you. Grieving while Christian. This book was written by Frances Carell. A Christian lady who was badly shaken by grief when she lost her father to cancer. It is a timeless piece that would help you or anyone you know that is dealing with grief. It will help you through the journey, be it a new loss or an old scar that wouldn't go away. It would give you succor and hold you and offer you a deep practical insight on how to cope and deal with grief and loss. How to go through the process of grieving without necessarily losing yourself, your faith, or your belief. Sadly, grief is something that everyone is fitted to experience. So if you are grieving, or you know someone who is dealing with the shattering sting of loss, please get this book now and read it. Send it to them. It will be very helpful and you'll be glad that you did. This book is available on Amazon and it is very easy to purchase. Just click on the link that I'm going to leave pinned in the comment section and in the description box and you can get yourself or that person you're trying to help a copy. So back to Pastor Taiwo. So Pastor Taiwo continued with his ministration, drawing strength and courage from God. And after some years of mourning, friends and family began encouraging him to remarry. Even Bimbo's mother, his mother-in-law, kept on persuading him to move on with his life and take another wife. You have to move on. <laughs> you can't stay single forever. Yes, you loved your wife, but life has to go on. You need a wife. You can't mourn forever. And the pressure kept on mounting and mounting. So Pastor Taiwo had visited London for a speaking engagement when he met Namthi Rosemary Zulu, a South African lady who was then living in London and working as a music director. Rosemary, her name, what a coincidence, the same name as his first wife. Pastor Taiwo took a special liking to her, but honestly, the feeling was not mutual. She saw him as a man of God, and besides, she was dating somebody else at the time. So no, it wasn't love at first sight, at least for her. But you know what they say? What will be, will eventually be. These two later reconnected again in London and then picked off a relationship. And the rest they say is history. After five years of Bimbo's demise, Pastor Taiwo got remarried to his South African beau, 
nothing. She gave up her job, her location, everything and moved to Nigeria to be with her husband. They had a beautiful wedding at the Civic Center in Ozumba Mbadiwe, Victoria Island, Lagos. They proceeded to have two children together, two sons. Pastor Taiwo began to feel life come back to him. He described Namthi as his renewed hope, the one who came and wiped away all his tears, lightened his pain and gave him a reason to go on. He said that he loved her with all of his heart and was grateful to God for the gift of her. But remember how we started this video? The toughest battles being reserved for God's strongest soldiers? It seemed like Pastor Taiwo's battles were not coming to an end anytime soon. Nine years into his marriage with Pastor Nomthi, she fell terribly ill. And after much medical investigations and back and forth, it was discovered that she had cancer. Pastor Taiwo could not believe his eyes or his ears. He had experienced grief and pain firsthand. He just couldn't do it again. He couldn't. They prayed, they cried, they sought the face of God, got the best of the best medical attention. They believed, they hoped, they held on to their faith. She didn't give up. She kept on fighting this cancer for two whole years. But eventually, she lost the battle. Pastor Nomti passed on on the 9th of November 2021. After a hard two-year battle with cancer, she was in her prime, just like his first wife. She was only 47 years of age. Life for Pastor Taiwo at this point became Hello. Yes, he tried to come before his church congregation and act strong, but most times his strength failed him. He couldn't make sense of everything, of anything. The pain was too much for him to absorb. He was totally grief-stricken. He couldn't conceal it. Losing his first wife tragically and suddenly, and then watching his second wife die slowly and painfully before his very eyes, he was close to his breaking point. But unfortunately, there was more coming. Only a few weeks after he lost his second wife to cancer, his twin sister, the one who he shared a womb with, Kende, also died after a painful battle with cancer. So within the same period, he was watching his beloved wife and his twin sister die slowly and painfully. Guys, words could no longer convey the depth of his sorrow and helplessness. He was consumed by incomprehensible pain. It was totally indescribable. Only two years after the loss of his second wife, and his twin sister, Pastor Taiwo, sadly gave up the ghost. He passed a few weeks ago in the United States at the age of 67. A source very close to the family is quoted to have said this. He really didn't get over the losses he suffered. He tried to be strong, but there is a limit to what a man can take. Pastor was more devastated by what people said after Pastor Bimbo died, than what actually happened. Many people said nasty things that saddened his heart. He was touched by the savagery of the comments. Well, he had no choice and decided to move on despite the heartbreak. It took a lot of talking for him to decide to remarry. The clergyman also suffered another tragedy on November 9, 2021 when he lost his second wife, Pastor Nomthi, after battling cancer. If Pastor Bimbo's death was shattering, Pastor Nomthi's demise was a technical knockout. It knocked Pastor down and out. He was inconsolable. He was very bothered about what people would say. It left him totally lifeless. There was nothing we could tell him. It took something deep out of him 
and some of us became afraid for him. So there was the part of him dealing with the incident, dealing with the grief, and there was the fear, the pain of the nasty comments that comes. I don't need to say it. You guys know the speculation that comes when a man or even a woman loses their spouse the first time, the second time. People start to insinuate all sorts of diabolism, especially as a pastor. So he was dealing with these two things and his heart definitely could not take it anymore. Pastor Taiwo will be remembered for a lot of things, but especially as that pastor, one out of many, who stayed clear from scandals. He was a walking example of perseverance, of Christian strength. That strong soldier of God who fought the toughest battles, now he's in a place where he feels no pain, no loss, no grief. May God rest his soul. So guys, we have come to the end of today's video. I do hope you enjoyed watching it. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, give this video a big thumbs up, drop all your comments and your feelings down in the comment section and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way. Don't also forget to get the book I spoke about. Grief is inevitable and all of us will need help going through it get a copy and send one to that person who you know is going through loss thank you once again guys for watching i'll see you guys in my next one for now bye